Hey everybody, welcome to Star Citizen Live, the actor feature team q and I'm your host, uh, Jared Huckabee, and if you've, yes, I hesitated on my own name, uh, it's that kind of morning. If you've never seen Star Citizen Live before, it's where we take about an hour out of our, our, our day at the end of the week and let Jeremiah destroy what's left of our toys. How many did he break? Oh man... It's, it's not how many, it's that he somehow managed to zoom in on, like, the most expensive ones and just grind them. There's There was literally dust falling in the frame as he was destroying. Just, he's complete, completely oblivious to it. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, uh, but that was last week. This is this week. Uh, joining us here today are people who know how to respect toys. Uh, the actor feature team, uh, Johnny Jasivius. I still Hello. Like that. Uh, Chris Perry. <laughs> Joes. Yo. And 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 and, and uh, as I said that I got I got really un- I got really nervous about my pronunciation. Am I still destroying your name, Johnny? Uh, say it again. My full name. Am I still? Am I, no, oh gosh. Not John <laughs> Jasivius. <laughs> no, it's it's not. You're not quite there. It's you, Savage. No. That's how I it's, say it, anyway. It's what? Yesavichus. Yesavichus. So there's going to be a little, a little arrow on top of the C. The chip. I've been nowhere close. Okay. <laughs> and you guys just let me do it. You guys are supposed to. <laughs> I'm never going to get better. One of the only people in the company that can pronounce it is Rich, and that's because he asked me how to say it for about a month every day straight. He would turn to me and say, "How do I say your name?" <laughs> <laughs> All right. Paid off. Well, today's show is about actor feature stuff. Um, now, uh, actor feature stuff, uh, uh, it, it, it might, might not, uh, actor feature team or otherwise not core gameplay, I suppose. Uh, things that are related to the physical, play, to the player character, basically. How, you know, why am I explaining it? Johnny, you explain it. What, what the hell do you do? Core gameplay team do, uh, quite a lot now so uh yeah it, it kind of spread out from the active feature team it encompassed the weapon feature team as well and we're obviously working a lot more with things like the ui teams now like and and, and other teams like that too so uh active features like you say is everything to do with the player character so you know if that's uh, eating drinking breathing running climbing uh shooting even obviously that has ties with the weapon feature team but anything to do with what you're doing in the game core gameplay so uh and like i say now that we're working a lot more with a lot more teams in the company like the ui team uh we're even like you know helping iterate on things like the moby glass and improving things like that too so anything that's there potentially in front of your face anything that you're doing in the game while you're kind of not in a ship is kind of where we sit these days all right and uh, uh, first question right off the bat from, uh, wh- where'd it go? Uh, from Maxo, what the hell is this pile of shame behind him? Who are you talking, who, which one? You got to be more specific, Max. Uh, which one's the pile of shame? I don't know. Yeah. If, if, if you're going to give crap to my people, you got to be, you got to direct it specifically. All right. So as we are wont to do uh we put a thread up on spectrum earlier in this week where we collected questions uh to start the show off you can also um submit your questions live during the show with the word question in capital letters surrounded by brackets it's going to help me pull it out from the other thing oh the unpainted warhammers oh he's definitely talking about johnny i, I, then. I, I knew i knew who they were talking about <laughs> can you can, 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 can we get can we zoom in there we sh- where, 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 get, out, get out of the way of your un, unpainted warhammer here. <laughs> this is a, a very limited shot. I've raised my desk so you can't see the rest of it. Let's just hide that now. All right. All right. So let's jump into the show. We've goofed off enough. Um, one of the most voted up questions is a, is a recurring question that that, that comes back uh, com- comes back to us uh, uh, ever so often. Uh, holsters for civilian clothing. Uh, um, uh, people want to be able to uh, carry a sidearm without having to uh, wear a, a flight suit. It's like this. Uh, what can you tell us about uh, any potential future of 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 just rocking the Han Solo kind of thing in in, in plain clothes? 
Yeah, I mean, it, it's something we 100% want to do. Uh, we've benefited so far from a lot of the armor pieces and undersuits of uh, basically having like magnetic tech that's like letting you just like pop things on there, you know, like little mag plates and stuff to kind of justify that why you've got a weapon on your back and why it's just kind of like stuck to you. But that's a lot more difficult with things like clothing. And we know long term that we want clothing to have more functionality. And what I mean by that is it's not just something that's cosmetic for you to run around in a landing zone in. Uh, we know that as more and more content gets put onto the planets, people want to spend more time there and, you know, potentially spend nearly all of their time there. So a lot of the time you don't want to spend, I mean, like, it's not much of a concern right now, but, you know, you don't want to spend the money, you don't want to, uh, you know, buy an undersuit and upkeep it and the armor and all of that stuff you want to, and to be honest, some of the clothing looks cooler as well, that you might kind of want to kind of skew into that style. So you don't want to always be wearing that kind of like, you know, skin tight undersuit. Uh, so we want to be able to have armor that potentially has, you know, like additional protection. So I think none of the clothing right now actually has, you know, protection values on there. None of it's armored. Uh, you know, we want clothing that is potentially going to be able to have, and you know, store weapons on it, like you say. So we want to have holsters and we want to be able to put weapons on our backs and things like that so um the one thing that kind of has been holding us back a little bit is that it's a bit of a technical issue so we've got so much clothing in the game and obviously as we expand the universe of star citizen that's only going to get more and more varied right so having like a strap around your leg you know if we want to make that look good then that you know is going to deform all of the individual parts you know that are on your leg and that's going to be a shocking amount of work for the character team so uh, i know those guys are in discussions about what they want to do and how they want to handle it and how they can get it you know a sustainable solution while still making it look pretty good uh and i don't want to write any checks for them so you know if you get a chance to talk to them in the future that'd be a good question for them as well but from the design point of view you know that's something that we really want to push on going forward mm -hmm. Uh, right from the live chat, uh, how come there haven't been any new FPS weapons in a while? So we always wanted to get a base set of FPS weapons out there that kind of gave people a good variety of weapons to play with. Uh, and I feel like we've most of the way, kind of got most of the way there with that. We've kind of filled out a lot of the class and Verna, the bearing, uh, Gemini weapons. I think there's only one or two that we still need to actually get out there. Um, but because uh, I've read Spectrum, I know there's a couple of questions about certain related things later that we might get to. But, you know, we've been working on things like FPS devices and we've got weapons in the pipeline that have required a bit more engineering work because they have a bit more special functionality. So, um, that's the reason we're, we're kind of now skewing into more unique things rather than, you know, the more expected kind of more generic set of weapons that we've got out there at the moment. And it's worth uh, reminding folks that uh, your team is one of the teams that have switched their focus to squadron 42. Yes. Uh, you know, it, it, your work is still coming to the PU. It's just filtering through squadron 42 first. So a lot of your priorities will be, will be things that are, are, must-haves for squadron and stuff like that so um jared can you please sing something for us today no that's that's only uh that's, that's only when jeremiah is not breaking my toys um uh util uh utiliflex novia crossbow where is it from this so that's one of those kind of weapons that I just mentioned that requires a bit more tech to get working. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, we've got like the, the Novia crossbow, we've got some of the vault weapons as well that uh, expanding on the typical weapon behavior that we've got. And while, you know, it's just a crossbow, it just fires a bolt and it's nice and easy. Uh, obviously, there are kind of implement, impl what am I, what's the word I'm missing? Implications there. Yeah, implications there of uh, that uh, require our team and other teams to kind of chip in on to actually get working. So it's not gone away, but you know it's on the horizon. Sorry, Joe. Yeah, yeah, like okay. something like with the with the crossbow. You know, like in any game, you expect to shoot the the, the crossbow bolt, and then that sticks to surfaces and it sticks to people, and so on. So. Um, that requires um, like the physics team to, to do some work, and it's just they've got hotter, hotter. How do you say hotter fish to fry? Uh, bigger, bigger fish, fish to fry. To fry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Um, um, we'll, we'll go with hotter fish. Yeah, exactly. What did you said the other day, Joe? Was it, is it, I think you were trying to say if you can't beat them, oh, yeah. join them. But is that, I think you said if you can't them, defeat them, marry them. <laughs> marry them, exactly. <laughs> um, I remember all of these. <laughs> but yeah, uh, as you mentioned, like the vault, the vault weapon, for instance, um, like the parallax rifle. Um, that's one of those weapons. Like speaking of of hotter fish, um, that's quite cool in the way that it's got a evolving fire mode. So it's going to start out being like a, a projectile shooting weapon as you start firing. Um, it will then evolve into a, a, a beam. So it'll start out with a tug, 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 where you have the beam. And uh, it also has the potential or the um, potential for overheating. So that is something that's coming, but uh, yeah. No? Yeah, again, more engineering work. <clears throat> more engineering work. That we're creating for our poor poor engineers at the company. But it Hot should be fun to use indeed. when we get it. Yeah. Uh, what's the status of being able to set trolleys upright again if they've fallen onto their sides? You tip a trolley over and you're done. <laughs> so, yeah, um, we absolutely have plans for improving trolleys. Um, and... You know, it's not just tipping them on their side. It's also, we know that people want and we want hover trolleys. So that's absolutely something that we want to look at at some point. Um, when that happens, though, yeah, it's, it's a little bit further down the road, unfortunately. Uh, I apologize for the trolley woes. Give trolley. Um, how about a, a, a any update on a backpack that does not require torso armor? Mm. That that kind of ties in, um, I guess, a little bit to what I was talking about earlier with the you know more functional clothing. Um, we've talked about the possibility of maybe having an undersuit backpack as well, which would be a little bit easier to do. But I think again, it's that expectation of when you've got armor, it's kind of you know you can justify attaching something to it without having lots of physical straps and things like that because you know it's a bit higher tech than like regular clothing, right? So um, it's a bit more difficult with clothing because you've got to factor in, you know, I've got straps going over my shoulder. Uh, okay, what if I'm wearing a t-shirt? What if I'm wearing a hoodie? What if I'm wearing a jacket? What if I'm wearing, you know, a robe or something like that that you might see in somewhere like Pyro and it's just like, oh, right, okay, we've got technical issues there that we need to resolve. So, again, another, another question or another problem that the character team are very diligently trying to solve for us, but we don't have any answers for it at the moment. It's just something that we know we want to do. I think the the Citizen Con demo had a backpack that was wearable in clothes and whatnot. So, um, a glimpse of the future. Here's here here's here's <laughs> here, here, here here's here's another hot one. Uh, this is this one's from our greatest hits here. Uh, what is the priority for parachutes or anything at all? Something, please, dear God, anything. That can allow players to survive an ejection in atmosphere. <laughs> parachutes, yeah, par parachute sounds nice. Um, like as we're adding more gameplay and, and stuff to do on planets, like we're expecting to have more dogfights and so on on, on on planets. So, absolutely, we you need to be able to jump out of like bail out of your ship and, and survive the fall and not just fall to your death. Um, so it's something that we want to do. Um, and it, it needs designing um, from our point. Um, and yeah, definitely something that we, I would like to see in our game. Well, it's funny, actually, because I do sometimes scan the thread on Spectrum before we come here. And I saw this question. And I was like, oh, parachute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, we've talked about it a little bit internally before. And it's funny because then not long after that, I was just like scrolling down Twitter. And I saw, an, I can't, sorry, I can't remember who it was, but someone put a community vote up there. And it's like, oh, what would you like to see in game next? And it was like, oh, like a Banu hover bike, like this, you know, a couple of other really cool things. And then parachute. And I was like, I was like, you know, like, let me just look at the results. Parachute was like 90%. And so it's like, <laughs> oh, wow, you guys really, really want a parachute. So, yeah, that's, uh, that's something that we'll be, uh, you know, looking at adding in the future. But like Joe said, there's just uh, no timeline on it right now. Should make people choose between a parachute and a compass. I think compass, compass, <laughs> compass, I think compass would probably still win. Um, all right. Uh, here's a very simple question. Uh, Chris. 
how will FPS scanning work? Just, just lay it out. Just, how will <laughs> FPS <laughs> scanning work? <laughs> yeah. No visuals. Answer, this right? isn't this isn't the visual show. So do it. Tell us what you can without any visuals. Sure. So, it, I mean, to start off with, it's it's good mention that it's going to be the same system we have now for ships in the we have what we call a signature system that's like driving radar and scanning um so the fundamentals are the same across both uh, and the idea there is that they absolutely cross pollinate so you know ships should be able to pick up uh, actors uh, characters will be able to pick up ships that kind of thing um it is somewhat different in terms of like uh, passive detection um and uh we Describe as active detection. So, if you're in a ship, you pick things up just by passively by flying around, you know, IR, EM. Uh, with the FPS side of things, it's going to be passive for audio. So, you know, if people are firing weapons, you hear footsteps, that kind of thing, that gets picked up. But you're going to have to actively choose the ping to detect EM and IR. Uh, I think that's going to sort of give quite a different sort of um, cadence and, and uh, feel to it. Um, for actual like scanning though, for getting information on, on things, the idea is that you can absolutely scan ships. So when you're scanning you click the ship on something else or another ship, you'll get a similar experience in the FPS and that's going to be on the helmet. So, you know, you won't have um, dedicated like device or whatnot. It's, it's going to be uh, primarily based on the helmet and seeing that in your HUD. Um, in terms of uh, what you can actually see on, say, characters. Uh, the idea is similar to ships. You know, you can sort of see what weapons, um, what items and stuff are attached to it. Same with uh, characters, you'll be able to see the weapons, uh, grenades, ammo, etc. that are attached. You know, if, uh, if they've got a burrito in their pocket, you should be able to find that out as well. Uh, and obviously, uh, act status and whatnot, we want to provide information. So if, if someone's down or bleeding, you can maybe find that out from range. Um, yeah, there's, there's lots of cool things coming from it. Um, we've got some sort of quite big changes to radar and scanning in general as well that's going to be rolling out with uh, with FPS we can't really talk about just yet but that's all going to be using the same underlying uh, system uh, as in with the signatures uh, but the interface to it is, is getting a bit of an overhaul and that's for both FPS and ships so hopefully more of that soon but not yet fortunately. And because uh, things being diegetic in the universe is always a big concern uh, for our game uh, what about when you're not wearing a helmet? So there will be the lens, but the idea there is that they're sort of quite high tech and expensive. So you won't necessarily be going out and buying them from you know, your local supermarket or <laughs> uh, that, that, that's going to be high end tech that you have to pay quite a bit for. So it's so a helmet is going to be the primary method for quite some time. Uh, there are some things that utilize the the signature system. So, for example, we've got like the mining. Uh, you know, you, you've got the tool that that's using signature to to find resources and whatnot. Um, so there are other devices that, that use the underlying system, but in terms of like, the core gameplay loop, it's, it's going to be helmet based. Uh, and while we're on the topic, uh, any updates to scanning harvestables? Yes, actually, we were discussing this with the EPU not too long ago. Uh, we're definitely going to be doing it at some point. Uh, the plan at the moment is to roll out with the FPS scanning. Uh, so you should, as a, you know, on foot, be able to find them uh, using the ping and scan. Um, switch gears here a little bit considering the importance of hunger and thirst in the PU today and going forward combined with the detailed bathrooms in game is there still a plan to have players use the restrooms as a required part of the gameplay uh, is it going to be in for RP purposes or just to have bathrooms exist for immersion I see you Astropub Although you weren't the only one to ask this question, there was a, there was a, a not surprising number of when can we use the toilet questions. Um, so uh, bathrooms, mm. so yeah, bathrooms. So like you're talking about like toilets and stuff. Then the idea is that yes, they're eventually going to be functional, but we've not talked about any associated gameplay surrounding them like at all yet. So um, you know. We're not trying to make Star Citizen into The Sims. Like you're not going to have to worry about your bladder meter or anything like that, or at least that's not the plan. Um, but something that just because you say bathroom, and this is just the the UK showing in me that you'll have to get used to, Jared. But it makes me think of showers because in the UK, bathrooms in the UK have a shower in or a bath. But that kind well, of. Well, I'm positive this question included using the shower. 
okay. Oh, cool. Well, that's all right then. Um, so, yeah, hygiene uh, is going to be a, a part of like, one of the next iterations of the actor data system. Um, and that is uh, the way that is going to work, basically, is it's not going to get in the way of you doing any of your you know, regular gameplay. If you're flying a ship, if you're out shooting people, if you're exploring, mining, whatever you're doing, it's not going to be a factor. You don't need to worry about it. It's going to have an effect in social spaces, though. So the idea is that if you are very stinky and you've not showered in a long time and you turn up to a truck stop and you know turn up to a county buy food or whatever there will be npcs in the area that will probably start saying you know like oh you know what's that smell like what's that stench that you smell like some horrible uh swamp monster that's just been you know rolling around on uh on several different planets for the last few days um, so yeah, the, the NPCs will react to you, and it might even get to the point where you know you might get refused service if you are particularly bad. So that also kind of ties into I think we uh, talked about it the last time I was on the dirt and wear systems that are coming in as well. So that kind of all feeds into a appearance of your character. So if I come in and I smell, I'm sure there'll probably no issue. You know, like there might be a couple of comments here and there, uh, but they're not going to stop you from, you know, like being served, like getting food or whatever like that. But if you come into like a fancy establishment on, say, like Microtech, and you walk in covered in mud, like your clothes are full of holes, you absolutely reek. Then you know they might just tell you to go away. Um, so it's something to keep in mind. It's not something that you're going to have to really, you know, like focus on because it's, you know, if someone turns you away, obviously you can go and get cleaned up, but. Um, it's something that you're gonna have to keep in mind, and I think it kind of like adds to the, uh, you know, experience, uh, the immersive experience that we're creating. How in the world are you going to communicate to the player what their funk index is? There's like, not going like... to be a funk meter, if that's what you're asking. <laughs> I think it will just be a case of like things like dirt and wear are going to be a lot more visual, right? Um, and they're going to be very noticeable. If you've gone and like rolled around in mud then you're going to be covered in mud. Like if you are out for a long time and your armor's worn, it will start to get, you know, like a, maybe a couple of holes in it, and like clothing especially, it'll get like holes in it, rips in it. It'll look kind of like filthy and like faded and things like that. So that'll be super obvious. Hygiene, we're not going to have things like stink lines on. And like I say, hygiene and isolation isn't going to like affect your gameplay. There'll just be comments here and there of just like, what's that smell? And at that point you might be like, oh, oh yeah, I've not showered like in the last like 10 play sessions I've had. Maybe I should, next time I'm on my ship, just quickly pop in there and have a wash. <laughs> um, so yeah, the, uh, no plans for a stink meter or visual stink lines coming from your character, nothing like that. Maybe a few flies, yeah. depending on where you are. <laughs> yeah, uh... yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, all right, let's, uh, let's... More than I expected from a question about pooping. Um, can we look forward to possibly other means of carrying incapacitated bodies? Uh, perhaps a fireman carry, maybe? The dragging can take pretty long for longer distances. Yes. Yeah, uh, we, we feel the same way about dragging. Um, it's obviously great to be able to sort of drag your body out of fire. You know, that, that's for us, that's the dream of, I mean, close combat fighting and I'm dragging someone away whilst pew pewing uh, back into cover. Uh, but long distances, uh, and also to be honest, when you're trying to pick a place someone and put them into the med bed, and you know further down the line, bounty hunting, shoving someone into a storage locker, um, sorry, cryo pod, um, <coughs> you're going to want to pick them up r rather than be dragging them all over the place. So yeah, we, we really want that. Um, I'm, I'm not sure when that's going to be, but it is something we want to do. Oh, you're muted, Joyce. Oh, we're not hearing you. Nope. We've lost you. Oh, gone. All right. Well, just keep trying to talk until we hear just you. Mime it. Uh, <laughs> he's wanting to talk about restraints and. Oh, restraints. Okay. Yeah. So, yep. yeah, like restraint. I've still lost re you. Re re restraining is a system that we're definitely currently actually looking into. You didn't, you didn't charge your headset. You didn't charge your headset before the show. Cardinal. <laughs> Cardinal fail. All right. So I can, um, I can cover if you can hear me. Sure. Yeah, I mean, like, restraining is something we're looking into at the moment. And obviously, Chris mentioned bounty hunting. So bounty hunting is going to be pretty difficult if you can't tie someone up in some fashion. So we don't know what restraints are going to be yet in terms of, is it going to be zip ties? Is it going to be handcuffs or anything like that? But, you know, you're going to want to be able to restrain someone's arms and legs so you can 
you know, not let them escape. We had a quite funny moment in the office, actually, where I was like, oh, I'd just be fine with hands. And, you know, obviously doubting myself. I'm a big guy. I'm not very fit. Like, if I got on the floor and someone had tied my hands together, I might struggle to get up. But Joe has very kindly demonstrated how easy it was to just stand up, no problem, with your hands behind your back. So oh, I was like, yeah. yep, okay. Now oh, you're back now. <laughs> I'm back now. Cool. Yes, yeah. yes. <laughs> Looks like the technical designer is having technical issues. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, I didn't hear at all what you were saying, but yeah. Okay, uh, but yeah, I was just quickly talking about. <laughs> I was just quickly talking about some of the conversations we had around restraining and, and your lovely demonstration of how easy it is to get up with your hands tied behind your back. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like the idea is you're going to restrain them, arms, legs, so they can't escape, and then uh, we'll tie that into body carrying, into bounty hunting, so you can put them maybe not in storage lockers like Chris's school bully days, but you know, uh, into cryopods instead. And you know, it, it'd be kind of rubbish if you know trying to bring someone in alive. And you're on a, a bit of a rocky planet, and you're like bump, 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 bump all the way back to your <laughs> ship. You know they might not survive the trip. Uh, you know it reminds me of the Wild West days where you know someone would get dragged by a rope behind someone's horse. Uh, <laughs> we probably don't want that. No, we're a bit more civilized than that, aren't we? A little bit. A little bit. Um, <laughs> depends when you ask. Uh, while your while your mic is still working, Joes, uh, what sort of attachments are planned for FPS weapons in broad terms? Uh, adding foregrips, underbarrel weapons, launchers, or expanding some existing attachment weapons. We've talked about it in the past, but not for some time. So why don't you give us an update on uh, what the current plan is? All right. So we definitely want to add more weapon attachments, and something that we have um, um, uh, like down the line is that's coming is bipods so that you would be able to get a bit more accuracy while while being stationary and, and firing uh, so you can sort of like lock down an area and, and just be if anyone comes in here it's the kill zone right um we're potentially looking into more uh types of like underbarrel um attachments as well like we don't necessarily just want to add more weapons but but more more attachments and the the attachments should like alter a bit how like how how either you use the weapon or or how how the weapon functions so there's there's like technical uh limitations currently that we need some engineering time um to do to maybe alter a bit how how the recoil works a bit or 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 stuff like that um have you considered just all grenade la grenade launchers? Just nothing but grenade launchers, top to bottom? Something that we've like talked about internally, but uh, we haven't done any designs for, for an underbarrel grenade launchers right now. It, it, I mean, it, it could be done. Obviously, it still requires some work as well, but we do have a big grenade launcher that you can carry around anyway, so yeah. why, would, why would you want like a little one-shot one when you could have the real deal? <laughs> You know, so maybe we'll take it as an option later down the line, but we've yeah. not seen it as uh, necessary yet. Um, I'm going to take this. We're about halfway through the show. I want to remind folks that this is the actor feature team. Uh, questions about the look of clothes, armor, beard, stuff like that. That would be the character team. Uh, basically, character team are what the player character looks like. Actor feature team is what the player character can do in, 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 the, in an overly simplistic. There's some areas where they cross over and stuff. But for the most part, keep that in mind with your questions. And then if you're still asking about spaceships, you're way off. Way, a whole other team entirely. Um, all right, here's one. Uh, 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 this one might have been from me, but it wasn't. Uh Will we be able to select standard loadouts? It is very annoying to decorate your character, die, and then spend an, having, have to spend another 10 minutes hanging guns on them. So we're not planning any sort of loadout editor? No. Or, bye, Chris. Um, nope, bye. Oh, okay. I'll see, I'll see you next week. <laughs> um, um, however, uh, lockers. Lockers are the thing we want to uh, deliver to you and hopefully provide you what you're after. Uh, the idea is, especially for like armor lockers, you would go up to a, a locker fully attired and just be able to dump what you're wearing into it, and that would retain, you know, your, your sidearm, all your sort of equipment, grenades, ammo, etc. So, all the time you put into just equipping yourself up, you'll be able to save that and store it in a locker. And obviously, if you've got multiple lockers, then you can have multiple loadouts that you can return to every time. Uh, 
gives you a great bonus if you've got a bigger ship or, or you know, eventually larger HABs. Um, we also do want to support the notion of outfits, uh, but they're going to be more sort of geared towards clothing, uh, primarily because with uh, armor lockers, the idea is sort of one suit per, per locker. So you just, you know, what's in that locker is your loadout, so to speak. Uh, gotcha. But without without fits for clothing, um, you know, you could buy an outfit from a shop, come back, go, go up to your wardrobe or locker, just dump that into your locker. Uh, and then when you return to it, you might say, oh, I want to equip that outfit again. Um, and, and again, you know, you might want to customize it. So maybe you, got, you bought two outfits, but you like half and one more or whatever. So the, the idea there is that you'll be able to customize clothing outfits. Uh, and that should be within an interface that's like tied into your locker. And yeah, just, just so you're aware, so lockers, it's meant to be very tactile, you know, the player interaction system, we want to use that throughout the entire game, uh, but we also want to bring in elements of the, the inventory system uh, so that you're able to, through that, customize outfits and whatnot. Again, it's, you know, it's very early days. This is on the horizon. Um, not sure when it's coming. Um, but lockers, uh, yeah, we're, we're, we've got designs. We know what we're doing for that. Yeah, I'm looking forward to working on that. Gotcha. So similar functionality, just approaching it from a more diegetic in-universe. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, will there be any way to get sustenance in an area where we won't be able to remove our helmet without dying? Um. People thinking about pyro. Yeah. I mean, we don't have any plans at the moment, but you know. I always say never say never, and that very much ties into the eventual plan we have for the player suit and player armor, is that uh, conversations we've had in the past, I think, again, mentioned it last time I was on here, was um, uh, it almost is going to be like a mini spaceship by the time we're done. It's going to generate power and things like that. So potentially, as long as it doesn't just completely take away uh, from the fact that you do need to find food and drink to survive and, and consume that, then we can maybe look into, you know, some sort of suit integrated system but it's something that we haven't talked about at all so don't take that as me promising that's what you're going to get but that's just an idea uh, that we talked about a little bit here and there um so that's maybe something we could do in the future but not right now but uh again like what i just said there was like obviously i don't want to just completely nullify the fact that we have hunger and thirst uh, and something that we always say is that planning is part of the core game loop you always need to make sure that you eat and drink before you go into these situations so you're not just going out you know oh i'm a little bit hungry and thirsty i'm going to go on a you know a three-hour trip out somewhere into you know the volcano planet where uh, you know i won't find any food or drink like obviously that's very bad preparation and you're going to suffer for it um uh, and kind of what I wanted to say is like, there's obviously a bit of a difference between two different hostile, there's a difference between hostile environments is what I'm trying to say. So if you're obviously in zero G uh, and, you know, there's no atmosphere, then taking off your helmet is just a big no-no in general. Uh, but say if you're on a planet that's super hot or super cold, and hopefully you're wearing the right gear for that anyway, again, part of the planning loop. Um, if you take your helmet off for a few seconds while you just have a quick drink or a quick something to eat, it's not a big deal. So um yeah okay um let's see what, what do we got here um let's do it while we're on the top while, while we're on the subject of helmets here uh what's the plan for being able to remove your helmet and put it back on again without needing to go into inventory store it in a backpack or drop it the people have seen the atc bind key and and now there's blood in the water <laughs> uh. <laughs> Um, that is actually something we're working on at the moment. Uh, so we've been playing around with this a little bit in game currently. So the idea is that you'll be able to remove your helmet as an actual action. So you can potentially either carry it under your arm. Uh, so it's kind of like tucked under your, sh your shoulder a little bit, or it will be attached to an actual, almost like a clip or something on your suit. That's basically like a little item port. So like how we do with the weapons and stuff at the moment, uh, which I think is currently located on the hip. We've been moving it around a little bit just to see where best fits. Um, but this just means that, you know, your helmet is still available, but you've still got your hands free to do everything that you want to do. So, you know, you can eat, drink, you know, get into a fight in a bar or whatever, while you've still got your helmet handy. So again, that kind of ties into what I just said, where it's like, you can quickly take your helmet off, put it on your belt or whatever, have something to eat and drink, quickly put it back on again without needing to go into the inventory uh, and start, you know, moving things to and from your backpack or dropping it on the floor or anything awkward like that. So uh, totally. And, uh, you know, obviously as well, you know, actions to kind of move this around. Obviously, we're potentially going to find try and find a key binding for it. So it's nice and easy to use. And then 
you know, if not, it will still be on the personal in the thought menu anyway. So it should be uh, a nice and easy action to trigger. Okay. And I'm a, it's my recommendation, a one in 100 chance that when you trigger it, it does a helmet flip as you're moving it. <laughs> I'll take a note. Hang on. Uh, can, what can you tell us about EVA uh, T2 and zero G push pull? Uh, will there be decoupled EVA? So, first thing to mention is probably good news. It's very much in development. We've got quite a few people working on it right now. Um, uh, big change coming for EVA is that it's going to be uh, requiring fuel. So. The idea is you haven't got you know indefinite thrust, uh, and that heavily ties into the zero G push pull. We want to encourage you to use it, uh, so you're actually thinking about where you're expending fuel, uh, where it's best to clamber on the surface instead of zooming around like, like Iron Man. Um, yeah, so the, going to the back to the decoupled part, uh, it, it's very much a part of both zero G and, and EVA. Uh, if you imagine you're, you know you're clambering slowly over a surface. Um, th that's going to be the, the general sort of traversal uh, whilst you're in zero-g, um, but you will be able to sort of push off. Uh, and that's going to be whether you're moving between different objects or if you're on the surface of a ship, if you're going from one ship to another, between, you know, there's loot or whatever, like ships exploded, you want to go get the cargo boxes, or perhaps there's, you know, you want to get to an asteroid so you can start mining, etc. Um, that will be, you know, decoupled in terms of, I move in a direction, I keep moving until something else occurs to, to prevent me from that movement carrying on uh, but we're also going to be introducing sort of skimming across surfaces so the, the slow sort of ponderous clambering movement is going to be one part of the zero g push pull but you're also going to be able to sort of just push yourself along the surface and that's you know it's the equivalent of a sprint in zero g but it's going to be using sort of newtonian decoupled physics to, to achieve that um the eva itself uh, it's changing a little bit uh, so i'd say it's sort of decoupled light uh, and before you get sad i'll, I'll, I'll describe why I say that. Um, so the idea is you will thrust in a direction. Um, you can then release the input and stop stop that thrust. You will continue indefinitely in that direction. If you start to look around, uh, again, you, you keep going in that direction. But if I turn and then um, I give another thrust input, I will start to like thrust in that direction. And the way that differs from the decoupled mode, um, you could be, you know, traveling one direction, you turn 90 degrees, and then you start to thrust in that direction. You've still got that momentum in the original direction. Uh, we want to not have that for EVA, we want more of a sense of you know, the, the Ironman flying sensation. Uh, so you, you will have the equivalent of coupled flight whilst you're reorientating yourself and changing the, the thrust vector. Uh, but once you've you know, you know, released the thrust input, then you go back to the sort of the coupled model. So it's, it's kind of a halfway in between. Um, We've got that working now, and it you know it feels fun. We think we found the fun there. Um, yeah, hopefully that answers the question. <laughs> yeah, no. And as you said, that's currently in development uh, yeah. for Squadron Forty Two, and then when it gets yes all yeah. proven out there, it'll make its way to the PU. Exactly. All right. Um, will holographic and red dot sites? ever get proper parallax compensation right now the reticle appears to be pasted onto the site itself but these reticles should have the appearance of projecting far forward of the weapon like a laser sight yes yes definitely this is um like if you look at some of the games that are being released right now they m most of them have this parallax um effect on aiming down sight with uh, with holographic sites and so on and it's definitely something that we want to do it's um, um, just a matter of priority at this point, but uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, like us as the design team, do a ton of competitive analysis to make sure, especially with the weapons, just to make sure that we're kind of like on top of. Because obviously, as new games come out, tech gets better, weapons start to feel better. We obviously want to make sure that we're on the cutting edge of making our you know FPS experience feel good as well. So uh, this is something that we've looked at quite recently and just started 
to discuss like what it is we can do to start making improvements to them because they've not really been from a techno like a technological a technological point of view we've not really had much engineering work on the actual visuals of the sites themselves for a long time um probably several years at this point so it's just again we're trying to get the core systems in game right now so this is just kind of something to come later as a you know almost like polish okay uh here's another uh, here's another frequent one we get every time you're on the on the show uh uh, any update on when we might begin to see non-lethal weaponry added to the game? So yeah, the, there's no timeline on when we want to deliver the first weapon. Uh, I know we've got at least one in the pipeline that has the capability to knock people out. Um, again, like you mentioned earlier, you know we're trying to prioritize or trying to, uh, you know, make things for Squadron Forty Two uh, as a, like a, a priority, uh, and that's kind of like where the team's leaning at the moment. So there's nothing yet been kind of like pu appropriate right now and this is probably more something that when we start to do the, the pu bounty hunting stuff this is probably when you're going to see this come along uh, and from a design point of view we can make this right now uh, and it's just a case of making sure that we've got the time to uh get the content ready content to go in and i think there was a little a few additions on the feedback side that you know you wouldn't have to worry about if you were shooting like an ai with this thing but from a player point of view if someone was shooting me with this i'd probably want some very obvious feedback that someone is firing this weapon at me and you know i want the feedback to say like i need to do something about this or i'm going to get knocked out and probably restrained and dragged away like we mentioned earlier um but yeah I, i'm this we could do this when we released the um, Electron Sniper Rifle, if people remember that, the one that does Chain Lightning, the Atzcav. Uh, when mm -hmm. we actually put Electron in, Electron is that da a wonderful damage type, actually, where we can kind of pull a few different levers. So uh, it's all electromagnetic or electrical damage type, but, you know, the electromagnetic side will interrupt, you know, actual electrical systems. We've got the uh, actual damage that it does physical harm to you, where it basically like, burns. And then we've also got the stun capability as well, where it's like actually, you know, almost like a taser, where it's kind of like knocking your sensors out. So uh, that's kind of what we can utilize uh, and potentially what this sort of weapon will look like when it comes out. Mm -hmm. uh, let's talk about some medical gameplay stuff here. Um, are you happy with the state of the Metagun's auto feature? Uh, I've heard many complaints that it completely bypasses the complexities of the medical system you have built, undermining player skill and knowledge. That's a good question. Um, to start with, I'd say no, we're, we're not happy. Um, and not just in general, with the medical gameplay, should you clarify that? Um, <laughs> uh, and there's... there's quite sort of a, a complex sort of ecosystem here that the majority of like the beginning of gameplay isn't there yet that there's you know we want a larger loop that involves like death of spaceman um so that there's consequence uh the death which then you know informs you the consequence to being injured uh there's you know armors in fact like jj can probably talk about that in a little bit you know that the, what we want to do with armor specialization and, and whatnot and you know additional additional items we can release uh, so, so no, uh, we're not happy with it. Uh, it is something that we're keeping a close eye on. We're, we're absolutely listening to your feedback, and we're aware that it's not something that, you know, people are necessarily happy with either. Um, we have looked at making a few little tweaks here and there. So, like for 317, for example, like we heard that, and we could tell that the injury stuff just wasn't coming through enough. So we've made it more likely that you're going to start to see injuries. So hopefully, the, you know, the, the use of those medkins become more important. Um, there are also other issues regarding like just dying straight away, like quite a few. Like, I was really surprised at how many of those we had. Uh, we've, we've knocked a load of those uh, out of the park, thankfully. Um, there is still an, an AI uh, murdering you uh, issue that <laughs> they're all a bit overzealous at the moment. Um, and the AI guys are like, hammering that and trying to fix that right now. Um, so, so to go back to the original question, sorry. Uh, no, we're not happy with it. Yes, we are going to try and change things, but we're not 100% sure yet because we really want to get like a lot of other things in first before we can really determine what we're going to do about that. So if you had to summarize uh, where we want to take medical gameplay next, not necessarily like, like not committing to this order, this is going to be first, this is going to be next, but as a general like like shopping list of things you want, where you want to take medical gameplay next. Sure. So... Going back to like that, that full loop we want to establish, um, 
that this, I guess, is a little bit of a step away from the metal gun, but just in general, um, we want costs for using metal beds, and that's for regen and also for healing injuries. Uh, and you might think, well, why is that so important? Well, it introduces uh, the aspect of resources being required and also players being able to charge for the use of their metal beds. So, you know, if you wake up in hospital, you get charged. Uh, if you wake up a player uh, own ship, then you can get charged for that or for using the, the services. So, you know, you start to make money out of these things. Um, I think as well, again, it's sort of a bit of a divergence, but it's within the same wheelhouse. Uh, at the moment, the drugs we've got are purely sort of medicinal, um, but we want to basically expand those so that we've got uh, utility drugs. Uh, so one of those would be sort of sedatives. So like sort of ties into the body and stuff and what JJ was saying before about, you know, the, the various different non-lethal weapons we're going to have eventually. Um, but there's also performance enhancing drugs uh, that we want to introduce and those will start to leverage uh, like the drug level um, a lot more, um, introduce things like um, basically after effects, you know, consequences for taking stuff, um, the, the coming down from the high of being able to shoot people repeatedly and whatnot. Um, and then obviously, yeah, there's, there's the whole Death of Space Man thing where, as I said, it, it gives you um, a reason not to die. Uh, you don't want to die because eventually you'll die forever and lose a lot of your stuff. Um, have, to, have to pull in your character and then they'll inherit your stuff. So yeah, there's lots of sort of consequence you want to introduce. Um, and that gives lots more, more weight to everything else within the system. Um, JJ, do you want to talk a bit about like armor specialization? Is that yeah, kind of I guess this is a bit further down the line, but um, we are, and I can't remember if I've mentioned this before, but we're essentially, you know, slowly trying to specialize the armor in different directions. So it's not just armor is armor, heavy is heavy, light is light. Uh, you know, we're trying to push things in slightly different directions. So you might actually have, uh, we've talked about having a support line of armors where it's like, oh, okay, these are still going to be good for most of the things that a regular suit will be, but it kind of skews it into a slightly different direction. So, you know, it'll still have some inventory space. You'll still be able to put weapons on it. You'll still have some room for some, like, you know, like a couple of like, throwable devices or, you know, you know, multi-tool, things like that. That. Um, but it will maybe have more, um, uh, you know, like uh, consumable slots, so you're able to go around and heal people more easily. We've talked about, you know, almost like uh, bespoke backpacks, which might have special functionality for like holding like medical fluid for the med gun. Um, and we even talked about super kind of like a, a couple of ideas for what we can do for say like, you know, because we want to do a light support and a heavy support of how they differ from each other. So like a light support might be a bit more like a first responder, like they've got lots of consumable storage. Obviously a light suit, you'll be able to run a lot faster in than heavy. And again, there's more iteration to do on that too. Um, but then the heavy is a bit more like, you know, what we've kind of been calling the battle medic, where it's like, you know, you're wearing heavy armor for a reason, you want protection um so or it's you know the big heavy suit that you want to go and rescue someone from say like a really hostile environment as well uh, and that might have some special functionality because uh, like you know all of this is kind of theoretical stuff at the moment it's, it's not going to be in game for a little while but you know it might be the biggest power producer in the game in terms of like you know it's the support suit it's got a lot of systems on it it's kind of dedicated in that direction uh, and you know we even talked about things like it could do like oh you know, you could provide, uh, like, eventually we want to char recharge energy mags. So it's like that suit would be able to do it a lot faster as well. So someone wearing the big heavy suit might actually be, from a support side, might actually still be quite good in combat. So lots of ideas floating around there. And obviously it kind of ties into, you know, how medical gameplay is kind of pushed, you know, further in this kind of more specialized direction, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um... Let's talk salvage. Uh, now, now I, I want to preface this uh, by, by saying that we're probably going to have a, a, a dedicated segment to salvage on ISC in the near future. So we're not going to exactly do a deep dive here because mo most of it you want is visuals to accompany explanations and stuff like this. But, um, uh, Joas, what, what can you tell us about the current state of salvage anyway? Where are we salvage. at? Salvage. Salvage is a really, really exciting feature. It's something that I'm working on currently, and it's... You're going to be able to salvage the hull from a ship. So, um, like, the, the 
I'll, I'll give you one of the examples, right? So you're in a dogfight with the, another player, you blow up their ship, and you've taken some damage to your ship as well. You're going to have the multi-tool, and you'll be able to jump out of your ship and salvage the debris from um, um, the guy that you just took out, and then float back to your ship and do some patch repairs onto the different parts that got damaged, and it visually it looks really cool um because you just you just hoover up the metals on um from the ship and it's uh it just feels really nice to use and uh, yeah it provides you like a way to uh repair your ship or also um gain some resources from 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 destroying someone else's ship um we do have quite a lot of ships in in our game so it's uh it, it needs to look you need to be able to salvage pretty much every ship in the game and um, it's what we're working on so it's, it's a technical <laughs> challenge yeah it's a, yeah. Yeah, it's a technical <laughs> challenge yes thank you <laughs> obviously well, we've, very we've, much we've had some ships that were made you know several years ago so yeah. there's obviously problems that arise from those you know, like people like you know fixing issues on them re-exporting them and not realizing something's broken or you know uh you know, tech has advanced on the newer ships that has kind of like made them potentially, you know, look a little bit better when they take damage and things like that. So there's some catch up work to do on both like the tech and content side. But like what you showed me the other day, Joris, was really cool where it's like when you're actually repairing the ship, you don't actually restore the paint, you just restore like the base metal layer where it's like, oh, this is super cool. I've been through a dogfight and I've patched myself up. I can see exactly where I was hit yeah. previously and where I've scarring repaired. on your exactly. ship. So yeah. when you're going to start seeing people landing at space stations and stuff and whatever, you're going to actually be able to see like, oh, this guy has been through some stuff, you know, like yeah, it almost tells a bit of a story point. about where they've been. So uh, it's really, really exciting. Um, I, I'm for sure going to be messing around with it when yeah. it goes live. Yeah, I can... uh, a couple of follow-up questions. Wait for people to see more. Yeah. It's cool. Yeah, a couple of follow-up questions from the chat. Uh, how, are you, how are you going to salvage enemy ships when they despawn 10 seconds after you blow them up? Yeah, it's one of those technical challenges that we're working on. We, yeah, yeah we're, we're aware of a lot of these issues. And yep. you know, uh, that's why we're being cagey about saying more. <laughs> yeah. that's, uh, that's where things like persistent streaming will uh, come into play. Um, uh, will you be able to salvage uh, uh, ground vehicles as well as uh, uh, spaceships? Um, yeah, yeah, you will. <laughs> it's working currently. Yeah, yeah. It's, um, <laughs> I'm mostly using the ships um, when I'm, I'm testing it in in my test levels. But yes, you're you're able to do it on on ground vehicles as well. I think it's basic. Could... Sorry, go on. It's, it's basically using the damage map system. Yeah. So anything that can be like currently, if you shoot the ship on the wing, you'll see a big hole in in on the wing, and we've expanded on that system and. Um, Without going into too much technical detail, it's uh, we've we've made it more consistent, um, like so that uh, like players will see the same type of, of, of damage holes and and uh, also made sure that you you can't cheat um, with the damage cheat? map. No, I don't um, know what that means. What, what do you mean can't cheat? Like basically, um, we've moved it from the like the, the, it being a CPU um, handled thing to a, a no fr from a GPU to a CPU. So it's uh, um, I don't want to go too much into technical detail, but networking basically it, it works over the network now. Well, yeah, there was, a, there was a big conversion that had to be done that basically was yeah. showing what you were doing on a surface and it would show for someone else. And yeah, it was a, a big tech hurdle early on that we had to try and get over. And uh, yeah, Tangent. it was client authoritative and now we had moved it up yes. to the server. Yes, okay. exactly. exactly. Thank you. Okay. Um, uh, we don't got much time. Let's look for some bigger ones here. Uh, we talked about medical game. Uh, we've talked about medical gameplay, which was which, which was one of your one of the big features the actor feature team worked on. We talked a little bit about where it's at, uh, whether we're happy with it, and what we want to do in the future. Let's do the exact same conversation, but for inventory. Before we run out of time here, uh, 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 how happy are you with, with with inventory right now? So 
happier, not satisfied, I'd say is um, accurate. Uh, there's a lot of sort of quality of life things we want to introduce. Um, that unfortunately, we didn't quite get to uh, with the last release. Uh, some stuff we are actually actively working on. Um, I've seen some improvements that I'm quite happy about. Uh, I will delve into a few things that I'd like to see, uh, I guess. Um, before I sort of talk about quality of life stuff, it's I think it's probably good to say that where we are now with imagery is just kind of the first step. Like, you know, the overall design is, is that everything's physicalized. Um, so, so at the moment, you know, you've, you've got the location imagery and you've got the chip imagery that they're a step up from what we had previously, but they're sort of like a magic bag of holding that you can magically access, you know, from no anywhere within those, those volumes. Um, we, we definitely want to move away from that. We want it to be, but, so we're going to ship, you've got a point of access where you go to, so, you know, you're rummaging around your glove compartment or your large storage bin um, or something that's built into the wall. Uh, the idea is that we will eventually swap out all ship interior uh, inventories to have that. And same for ship exteriors as well. Uh, we absolutely want, like, you know, an access point where you can go in and add inventories. At the moment, there's only, like, a couple of ships, three ships, I think, that have, uh, like, just the, the Gladius Saber and I think the Starfighter that they've got um, the, the external inventories. Uh, we want all the ships to have that. So, so yeah, there's, there's, there's lots of work to be done there. Um, so, yeah, big long-term steps. We want everything to be physicalized and uh, for, you know physicalized cargo as well that's uspu guys uh, providing that at some point and that ties in heavily um over 317 we're allowing you to move ship items weapons and whatnot within the inventory that is absolutely a stopgap um, when physicalized cargo comes along we're going to sort of strip that away because what you have in your ships at the moment um, is meant to be representative of you know the lockers you have on board the, the storage bins the, the storage compartments um, that are separate from uh, your cargo. So, so the idea there is, is that when we start to introduce those lockers, you know, the ship inventories we have become less important. We start introducing the external inventory interfaces and the ship interiors that effectively replaces those magic bag holding things. And you know, longer term with HABs um, and you know hangers at some point, that then rep replaces the need for the sort of the magic bag holding we have for the location inventories. So. Am I happy with where we've reached? Yes, we've got a long way to go though. Um, in the short term mode, like we've got a lot of sort of quality of life things we want to introduce. So I know some people have mentioned the idea of, you know, the stuff around your feet, dragging and dropping um, directly from what's on the floor around you, not just what's in your inventory and what's attached to you. Uh, so we definitely want to introduce that. Um, I think move all is quite a happy sort of, everyone wants that. Um, that wait, wait, did, wait. We're gonna... did, you, did you say move all? I, I, I did say move all, yes. Have you heard it before, by any chance? Huh? <laughs> so, so sorry, just move yeah. all. I just went to like a like a like a weird happy place. For <laughs> Continue. So, yeah, we, we, cool. So we definitely want to introduce that, um, and also sort of a quick move. So just to give an idea of that, move all would be move everything from one inventory to you know from one side of your one pane to another. So if I'm in my location, I can click move all and drag a bunch of stuff immediately into my ship inventory. That's you know, living the dream. Um, looting as well. Uh, but quick move, we want to do the same thing, but for one item. So you can quickly just, no, move that, move that without having to drag. Um, stacking. We're aware that people want stacking. We're really sorry we didn't get that in the first implementation. Um, it was a host of sort of backend problems that really sort of got in the way. But with, you know, we've got lots of backend upgrades coming, uh, and that's going to make that a lot easier. Um, at some point, we will do. Um, sort of client side stacking as well. So those two combined will allow us to stack a lot of things, uh, but I, I don't know when that's coming, I'm sorry. Uh, but it's definitely something we wanna do. Um, mission items, like at the moment, they're still sort of put in your magic pocket. There's another less um, nice word I could use for that pocket, but yeah, we want it to be tied into the inventory. So you're, you're putting those mission items, you see them in your, in your, uh, your personal inventory as a result. And you know, th those missions are, tracking the fact that they're in the inventory now, not not in sort of a, an invisible item put on your body. Um, oh yeah, and yes, search is another one we will definitely want to do. Again, I don't know when that's going to come along, um, but it is definitely on our roadmap. Um, there's a few sort of niceties as well. Um, so for example, if, if you're stood next to a wall and you're with the inventory right now, the camera's in the wall, which is great. We have a plan for that. We know what we want to do about it, but we just don't have time to vent it. Uh, same with, if you're in like a really dark, low light environment, it can be difficult to see what you're doing on your character. Um, we've got a plan to make that a bit better. So 
yeah, there's, there's a whole bunch of like quality of life things we want to improve uh, and introduce, you know, to you. But yeah, work in progress. Uh, for some of them, some of them further down the line. Uh, chat wants to know if you're familiar with the term prison wallet. I've I've heard it. Yes, I've, I may have used it on one or two occasions. Yes, I. I Oh, you might want to rephrase that, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait. You've used the term or you've used a prison wallet? <laughs> that, that's for me to know. And you one day to find out. Oh, perfect. <laughs> I have no one to blame but myself for that one. I, I set myself up for that. All right. Do not Google that, people. Do not Google it. Just uh, ask your parents. All right, that does it for uh, Star Citizen Live Actor Feature Team Q&A. That was a good one to stop the show on. Uh, 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 Johnny, Joe, Chris, thank you so much for taking time out of your week uh, to, 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 to be with us here. You thought when you moved over to Squadron 42 that you were going to get out of this. I know because I saw the relief <laughs> wash over your face when that happened. Uh, uh, not so much the case. Um uh, for folks watching home, remember that uh, ISC is currently on hiatus. Uh, we'll be uh, it's our normal quarterly hiatus. We'll be back on April twenty eighth, if I remember the date correctly. If that's a Thursday, that's the date we're going to be back. Um, and uh, there will be no SCL next week because it is a company holiday uh, for uh, Easter and stuff so uh the comp uh, so the company gets the 15th off so no show uh, for next week but we'll be right back here in two weeks uh with a sh i can't remember who's on the show at that point it's two weeks ahead and that's farther than i normally think so for johnny and joas and chris i'm jared uh take care uh keep an eye out on the robert space com website for more details on alpha 317 uh I don't know what to tell you. Everybody's working really hard to get it out, and 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 we want it out there as much as you guys want it on the live servers as well. I mean, all things in their time. So take care. See you later. See you in two weeks. Bye. Right. Thank you. See yes. Bye. I can't believe you said I've used a prison wallet. <laughs> <laughs> I, I hope there will be news. We'll see.